the rules for sloppy are pretty simple. So we're going to run it with a slot receiver most of the time. You can also tag it to run, run it with an outside guy, but this is the initial base way we would install it. So uh, we're going to be running the sloppy to this inside slot receiver right here. You can see we're in uh, 11 personnel tight end set, and the Mike linebacker is already pushed to the trip side. Uh, so pre-snap, the quarterback already knows it's almost definite he'd be working the weak side and be working the sloppy side because the mic is pushed. So the basic rules are um, we're going to read the first defender head up to inside. Head up to inside. So that would be this defender right here on the number two receiver. If that guy will let me win inside, then I'm going to do so. So if he opens his hips and runs out of there, if he spot drops, if he takes any sort of move that's going to enable me to win, then I'm going to. We'd like to hesitate slightly off the line of scrimmage so that we can see it develop a little bit. Just a slight hesitation or kind of a walk-off release can work. Um, we're going to push up and make our decision by three or four yards. When we hit five yards, the decision already has to have been made, and we're going to break at five or six yards. If I can win inside, I'm going to do so, and I'm going to take a slant move. It's basically just an inside slant. Now, from the two by two set, we want to stay really skinny because if this mic were to drop and then try and redirect, he could redirect right in the path of his throw, and that wouldn't be good. So we want to stay skinny out of the break, and you'll notice in some of the cuts that we watch later on that that'll happen. Now, if he will not allow me to win inside, maybe he turns his butt inside towards the quarterback, he's just got heavy inside leverage, and he's just not going to allow me to win inside, out, uh, inside then I'm going to strike it back. Okay, We call this a grab route. Some people call it a pivot or a whip, but I'm going to pivot back outside. So I'm going to give my eyes to the quarterback and pivot back outside. And one of the things we don't want to do is show the quarterback our eyes until we're ready for the ball. So uh, those are the general rules uh, for a basic uh, four-man or uh, Three, three stack look where you ha actually have a backer. In a second, we're going to look at what we would do uh, if we had a defender both inside and outside of the receiver. Now, he's inside leverage. You might assume that it's going to end up uh, striking it back out, but you're going to watch. He opens his hips, and right now, uh, the slot knows he can win inside. This guy's sold out to cover outside. He's done a nice job of stemming his outside shoulder balls on him right now. You can see the grass from hash to hash is wide open. We have a good matchup that we like with one of our best players. Notice how he slightly hesitates off the line to set the guy up and kind of read what's going on. Now if they will not let you win inside, then you're going to strike it back outside. So you see it's a 4-1 look. He's reading the first defender head up to inside that would be the read key. We're not going to count a deep safety. So when we say first man head up to inside, we're going to be looking at people near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a linebacker or a roll down safety. We're not going to count a deep safety. As he releases, you notice he's not in a big hurry. Um, hesitate slightly off the ball. Right now, he's not going to let me inside. If I were going to win inside, I would have to really cross his face. It would flatten the route out. There wouldn't be a lot of grass. The mic would be a threat on a redirect to blow me up. So I'm just going to take it outside and take what they give me. Ball's on him quick, and it's an easy completion. Just a simple throw and catch. When in doubt, break out is usually a good rule of thumb to use on this play. If there's ever any question, don't make things difficult by trying to get into the trash inside the box. Just break it back outside. If it's not clean, the quarterback will throw the complimentary route behind you. Okay, now this gets into the last phase. This is the third step in the teaching progression. If you have a defender inside and outside you, so there's his, his read key, first guy head up to inside, but he also has a guy outside. We teach, uh, and this was after a few years of running the play, and just it wasn't very good against odd fronts. And we decided we wanted to, we didn't want to let teams take us out of this route just by getting an odd front. So if you have a guy outside you, you can't strike it back outside. So your options become, I can either run my normal slant in cut if he's out of the way, if he allows me to win inside. And with an odd front, that's basically going to mean that he blitzes. Um, usually if it's a 3-3 three, three or a 3-4, one of those inside backers is going to blitz on most snaps. So if he's gone and he blitzes now, then I sh should have good grass to run this slant. Now, if he does not do that, if he doesn't allow me to take the slant, then I'm just going to sit. 
Okay, it just becomes a hitch, and the ball may be on you right now. You know, there can be times when he's going to sort of hang inside and he's going to widen a little bit, and you may just get a quick, easy completion to get five yards and try and get what you can get after the catch. Or if he's really squeezed by the in-out coverage or the bracket coverage, then hopefully we're going to be able to work to the complementary route behind him, especially if there's one high safety. You don't have any sort of hash safety that can rob the dig. So you can see here, notice again how there's a hesitation right off the line. He's not in any big hurry, slightly hesitating off the line. Now, we're in an empty set, and they're in a fire zone. Um, so what ends up happening is this Mike is really out of position. Um, he ends up being the guy, the whole player, and he's got to get all the way back over to match number three. So really, we could work the stick side here also. But the quarterback's decided uh, he's going to work with an odd front. He's going to get to make a choice, so he's going to work the sloppy side of the combination. So as he is having to be in a dead sprint to try and match to number three, it creates a lot of space. And again, we basically have from hash to hash to get open. He's selling out so much to cover that stick that the retrace thread is not really there. We end up getting a nice play. We'll watch it one more time. Not a difficult throw and catch. A throw that most high school quarterbacks can make pretty easily.